When she was just a boy, Mao shattered his world. A young Xi, born into an elite family in Beijing, watched as his father fell out of favor, sending him into exile and condemning him to hard labor in the countryside. But that wasn't the end. Fifty years later, the once exiled boy returned. Not as a victim, but as China's most powerful ruler since Mao. The question remains, how did Xi rise from a life in exile to total domination of China? Chapter 1. A Life of Twists and Turns, From Glory to Uncertainty 1953 to 1966 Xi Jinping was born on June 15, 1953, in Beijing. He came from a family that was deeply involved in Chinese politics. Xi Jinping's parents, Xi Zhongshun and Qi Xin, played pivotal roles in shaping his values and political outlook. Xi Zhongshun was a prominent figure in the Chinese Communist Party, known for his significant contributions to establishing guerrilla bases in the 1930s and later pioneering economic liberalization in southern China during the 1980s. Despite facing setbacks, including imprisonment and purges, he was respected for his political moderation. His wife, Qi Xin, joined the Communist Party at just 17 and emphasized humility and integrity in their family life. She instilled these values in her children, famously transcribing a Ming Dynasty motto about justice and integrity to teach Xi Jinping the importance of moral character. Her belief that doing one's job well was the highest form of filial piety encouraged Xi Jinping to dedicate himself to public service and strive for a better life for Chinese families. Together, they fostered an environment that balanced simplicity with a strong sense of duty, profoundly influencing their son's journey as a leader. His father, Xi Zhongshun, was a revolutionary hero who helped the Communist Party of China, CCP, come to power in 1949. Because of his father's position, Xi grew up in a place called Zhongnanhai, which is like China's White House neighborhood. This gave young Xi a front row seat to the inner workings of Chinese politics from a very early age. As a child, Xi lived a life that was very different from most Chinese children. He had access to better food, education, and opportunities. However, this privileged life also came with its own set of challenges. Xi had to be careful about how he behaved because people were always watching the children of important leaders. Xi's father was known for being more open-minded than many other communist leaders. He supported policies that allowed some private businesses and was friends with the Dalai Lama, the spiritual leader of Tibet. These views would later cause a lot of problems for the Xi family. Chapter 2. Getting Caught in the Crossfire of Mao's Culture Revolution 1966 to 1975. Even though Xi's childhood seemed good on the surface, there were always underlying tensions. His father's more liberal views sometimes clashed with other party leaders who wanted stricter communist policies. Young Xi learned early on that in Chinese politics, fortunes could change quickly. In 1966, when Xi was just 13 years old, everything changed. China's leader, Mao Zedong, started something called the Cultural Revolution. This was a time of great chaos in China, where people were encouraged to attack anyone seen as not loyal enough to communist ideas. It lasted from 1966 to 1976. During this period, millions of young people formed groups called the Red Guards, who were encouraged to challenge traditional values and anything considered bourgeois or related to the wealthy. Schools were closed, which meant that an entire generation missed out on education. Many urban youth, including a young Xi Jinping, were sent to rural areas to learn from farmers. The Cultural Revolution had devastating effects, with an estimated 1.5 to 2 million deaths and the destruction of many historical sites and cultural treasures. It also created a significant gap between generations, as young people were taught to take to the streets for change. Xi's father and his family was accused of being disloyal to the communist cause. He was stripped of his job, publicly humiliated, and eventually sent to work in a factory. The Xi family, once powerful and respected, suddenly found themselves labeled as enemies of the revolution. For young Xi, this was a shocking and traumatic experience. Overnight, he went from being a privileged child to being seen as the son of an enemy of the people. His family was split up, and Xi had to learn to take care of himself at a very young age. In 1969, when Xi was 15, he was sent to work in the countryside as part of Mao's Down to the Countryside movement. This program sent millions of urban youth to rural areas to learn from farmers and to spread communist ideas. He was sent to Liang Jiahe, a poor village in Shanxi province. Life in Liang Jiahe was incredibly hard for the city-raised Xi. He lived in a cave house, worked long hours doing hard physical labor, and often didn't have enough to eat. He later said he was always hungry during this time. The villagers initially distrusted Xi because of his background. 
He had to work extra hard to prove himself and gain their acceptance. He learned to carry heavy loads on a shoulder pole and became skilled at agricultural work. Despite the hardships, Xi's time in Liang Jiahe was formative. He learned to be tough, resilient, and became more politically aware. He also gained a deep understanding of rural life and the challenges faced by China's poorest people. This knowledge would later shape his political views and policies. During his time in the village, Xi also began to show leadership skills. He organized a biogas program to provide the village with fuel and work to combat a local malaria outbreak. These efforts helped him gain the villagers' trust and respect. Chapter 3, The Road Back to Power, Returning to Beijing, 1975 to 1982. After nearly seven years in the countryside, Xi was finally allowed to return to Beijing in 1975. His determination was evident in his persistent efforts to join the Communist Party applying 10 times before finally being accepted in 1974. He was accepted into Tsinghua University, one of China's most prestigious schools, to study chemical engineering. After years in rural exile, Xi Jinping slowly began to rehabilitate his family's name and his own political career. His father was politically rehabilitated in 1978, which helped Xi secure a position in the CCP. It was a challenge for Xi to study in university at first because of his intense farming experience and so many years away from formal education. Xi had to work extremely hard to catch up. This period deeply influenced Xi's people-oriented philosophy and strengthened his commitment to the party. Years later, Xi would reflect that while he physically left Liang Jiahe at 22, his heart remained there. After graduating from university, Xi began his career as an aide in the central government. Even though his father's rehabilitation, Xi Jinping still faced skepticism from party elites, who viewed him as riding on his father's connection and old reputations. Unlike some of his peers who had gained prominence through more direct revolutionary participation, Xi was considered a young prince, or a member of the political elite, whose status afforded him opportunities others didn't have. Because of this, there already be some hidden tensions around his political arena. To combat this perception, Xi left a decent powerful post as an aide to Geng Biao, a top military leader. Instead, Xi took postings in remote and challenging provinces such as Hebei and Fujian, where he worked his way up the political ladder. This choice not only allowed him to build a base of loyal supporters, but also demonstrated his ability to survive in politically turbulent environments. This decision was also a strategic move not to be drawn into any unwanted attention on him in Beijing. Chapter 4, 25 Years of Sharpening His Blade 1982 to 2007. Xi's decision to work at the local level proved to be a smart career move. Over the next 25 years, he slowly worked his way up through various positions in different provinces. From 1985 to 2002, Xi worked in Fujian province, eventually becoming the province's governor. During his time there, he focused on attracting foreign investment and fighting corruption. He also worked to improve relations with Taiwan, which is located just across the strait from Fujian. While in Fujian, in the 1990s, Xi faced one of the biggest challenges of his career. The province was hit by a huge smuggling scandal that implicated many local officials. Some very powerful people were said to be involved in these illegal activities. There were even rumors that the wife of Fujian's governor might have connections to criminal groups. Although Xi wasn't involved, the scandal happened under his watch and could have derailed his career. He managed to come through the crisis by cooperating fully with investigators and using the opportunity to strengthen his anti-corruption credentials. In 2002, Xi was transferred to Zhejiang province, one of China's wealthiest regions. As party secretary of Zhejiang, Xi continued to focus on economic development and fighting corruption. He became known for his eight-point regulation, a set of rules aimed at reducing bureaucratic waste and extravagance. In Zhejiang, Xi faced the challenge of balancing rapid economic growth with environmental protection. The province was heavily polluted due to its many factories, initiated programs to clean up the environment, but this sometimes conflicted with economic interests, forcing him to make difficult decisions. During this period, Xi also faced personal challenges. His first marriage to Kei Lingling ended in divorce. The demands of his political career had put a strain on their relationship. This personal setback was a reminder of the sacrifices required by a life in politics. Chapter 5, Rise to the Throne, 2007 to 2012. In 2007 and 2008 was a big year for Xi Jinping, who would later become China's leader. He was chosen as the vice president of China, which is like being second in command of the whole country. This was a really important step in his career. 
One of Xi's biggest jobs that year was helping to organize the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing. This was a huge deal for China because it was a chance to show the world how great the country had become. It also helped more people learn who Xi was, both in China and around the world. Before this, Xi had worked in different parts of China, including Shanghai, where he had to transform the municipal into a modern place with high global standard. All of these experiences helped prepare him for his new, important job. As vice president, Xi started working on things like protecting the environment and making friends with other countries. People started to notice that Xi might be the next person to lead China someday. 2008 was the year when he started to become really famous and powerful, setting him up to become China's top leader a few years later. Even as Xi was being groomed for top leadership, he had to navigate the complex world of CCP factional politics. Different groups within the party supported different candidates for leadership. Xi had to build alliances and prove that he could balance the interests of various factions. One of Xi's main rivals for power was Bo Shilai, the charismatic party secretary of Chongqing. Bo's populist style and anti-corruption campaign had made him popular with many Chinese people. However, in 2012, Bo got caught in a scandal that shocked the international landscape and he was removed from his position, later arrested on corruption charges. This event cleared the way for Xi's rise to the top, but it also highlighted the fierce competition for power within the CCP. Chapter 6. Becoming China's Ultimate Leader, The Cleanup Begins 2012 to 2013. In November 2012, Xi Jinping was elected General Secretary of the CCP at the 18th Party Congress. A few months later, in March 2013, he was named President of the People's Republic of China. These appointments made Xi the most powerful person in China. From the beginning of his leadership, Xi moved quickly to consolidate his power. He launched a massive anti-corruption campaign, targeting both tigers, high-ranking officials, and flies, lower-level bureaucrats. This campaign was popular with the public and it was huge. Since this cleanup began, about 4 million government workers got in trouble. More than 390 of these were tigers, really powerful and important people in the government. Some of them were even in charge of China's army or were top leaders in the country. Xi's team found out that many of these tigers had been doing dirts for a long time, some for over 10 years. But after the campaign started, almost no new tigers became corrupt. It was easier to catch the flies. About 40 out of 100 would get caught within a year if they did something wrong. But the tigers were harder to catch and could hide their criminal actions for longer. This big cleanup changed a lot in China. It made government workers at all levels think twice before doing anything corrupt but it also make officials scared to make any good changes as well. This cleanup allowed Xi to remove potential rivals and critics from positions of power. Xi faced significant challenges as he tried to implement his vision for China. Some party members resisted his attempts to centralize power, fearing a return to one-man rule like in the days of Mao Zedong, but it is already too late. Chapter 7. Ruler for Life 2018 to Present In 2018, China's parliament voted to remove presidential term limits, potentially allowing Xi to rule indefinitely. This move cemented Xi's position as China's most powerful leader since Mao Zedong. Xi Jinping's unprecedented third term as China's leader marks a dramatic shift in the country's political landscape. Now known as the chairman of everything, Xi has shaped China's government around his own ideas and filled important jobs with people loyal to him. As he starts this historic third term, Xi faces big challenges. At home, he needs to deal with a slowing economy and many young people without jobs. Internationally, tensions are high, especially with Western countries like the United States. Xi's extended rule not only cements his vision for China's future, but also makes people wonder about what might happen when one person has so much power in such a big and important country. As Xi continues to shape China's future, his ability to navigate these challenges will determine not only his own legacy, but also the trajectory of China in the 21st century. It's a big change for China, and the whole world is watching to see what happens next. What do you guys think about Xi Jinping rise to power? Does he even have a choice but to stay in power, given the many enemies he's made along the way? Please leave your comment below. We would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you for making it this far. If you like this video, you might want to share it with a like-minded friend. Thank you, and as always, stay blessed.